this meeting. And so welcome all for our second meeting in this cycle of postgraduate career opportunities in medicine. Uh, last time we discussed the opportunities that UK might deliver to us. And this time we're gonna focus more on Canada. And our main speaker of today is Haitam. He is the first year medicine student at the Wrocław Medical University, but he already has finished his biological degree in Canada. So I think he might be uh, the best person to actually introduce us to the uh, Canadian environment. So, Haitam, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, as she is, uh, Victoria has already introduced, I have finished a bachelor's in science from the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, BC, for about four years. And because for unfortunate reasons, I couldn't continue my medical degree in Canada, had to come here. But um, it was a privilege for me to get to work with Victoria to try and figure out the pathway um, in which students who are studying here can go back and continue or um, do their medical career uh, in Canada. So um, everything we're discussing today is basically aiming towards finding a match in one of the Canadian, Canadian medical schools. All right, so let's start. All right, first one. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm just gonna go directly into who is eligible so that I can grab most of your attention. Um, it can be very, very um, displeasing to hear this, but um, I've got some roots that I've included in the presentation later on. So hold on until I discuss the rest. So some basic requirements that you need to have in order to apply to Canadian medical schools is being a Canadian citizen or you hold a valid Canadian permanent uh, resident card. In Canada, um, it's unlike America, you do not need a green card to apply to their medical schools, but in Canada, that's one of the requirements. Um, the second one is actually a very interesting one. You are attending or have graduated from school listed in the World Directory of Medical Schools. So your university should make sense to uh, Canada and um, the way you lear you're learning currently um, and the system and, and everything that's going on in your medical school should make sense to Canada for you to be able to be eligible. And I've got good news about this coming soon, um, just later. You have written the uh, writ uh, required exams and we're gonna go into specifics of those later. You have reference letters and taken some electives. I will discuss those in a bit. Um, I've kept a note uh, right there for people who, you know, felt sad to hear that people should be Canadian residents, um, that you can apply to Immigration to Canada and I've included some information on this soon. Okay, so the good news is that our beautiful university is actually accepted by the Canadian systems. Um, and I've, also, I've done my research on this website, it's called the Word Director of Medical Schools, and I've um, searched our uh, university name, and then it popped up to say that in Canada, what we're doing right now is valid to them. So one advice to you all is I want each and every one of you, if you're trying to portray, um, or if you're trying to go to Canada, um, work hard because your university is accepted. So if you've got, um, some good grades and, uh, and uh, a personality that can show you can compete for one of those seats in the future. So I think it's very good that our university is accepted for them. Okay. All right, so just because, you know, we, most of us are not Canadians, um, I'm gonna discuss some ways in which uh, PR can be uh, acquired. And I'm gonna share my personal story as a, as a person who did not have a PR, um, six years ago and was able to have it. So it starts with my family. We've lived in the United Arab Emirates for about uh, 18 years of our lives. My dad and mother um, could not continue their careers in UAE. So they had to find a space in Canada for them to live in. So my dad decided to immigrate. So the point of this is to give you an idea of how you can pursue a PR. The first one is maybe you and your family would, would love to apply 
uh, uh, to immigrate to Canada, just like my family did. And what my father did to do to, to get uh, PR um, or immigrate to Canada is he went about choosing the business investment route. And um, it's quite a hassle because you need a lot of money for this one. Um, he paid about $120,000 to get accepted um, into this uh, program. So why Canada appreciates this business investment route is because you as an immigrant, you're telling Canada that I am immigrating to your lands to provide um, a space for people to work um, under my uh, business name. So that's why Canada would appreciate it if you have all the requirements. It's a lot of money, but maybe if your family decides to do this, that's the route. Um, after my father got accepted with his idea, he offered us to get sponsored. So he, he, he uh, sponsored his own family. We waited for about three to four years to get accepted. After that, we landed in Canada. Then we lived there for about six years. And then just three to four years um, in, we have got an acceptance of getting the uh, Canadian uh, citizenship. And uh, I've actually got an email just two days ago saying that, you know, you're accepted as a Canadian citizenship, uh, as a Canadian citizen. So that's just a first route. It cannot be Allahu valid. Akbar. Sorry. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Give me a second. Allahu Akbar. That's my prayer time. Go back to it. All right. Everybody's laughing at me right now, but it's okay. All right. All right. So the second route is um, because it's not valid for you to apply as a family, right? So if you're an individual, how can you do it? You can apply through the route of being a skilled immigrant. And that also requires a lot of money, but it's possible. The amount of money needed is about $12,000 to $24,000. And if you need more information about this route, you can go to Canada CA on the Immigration Services of Canada. So this is this option is for you to acquire PR for the people who need to have a PR because you need the PR in order to apply to medical schools in Canada. All right, so that's for the part. So moving on, we're gonna discuss the requirements that are needed for uh, Canadian medical schools. Now, there are two exams that you need and there is, there is, it's, it's like a very, very high priority and you cannot skip those things. I tried searching for ways in which you can skip those exams, um, but there's absolutely no chance. So the first exam is the NAC examination, it's mandatory. And the second one is the MCCQE part one. And I'm gonna dive now into the specifics of those and what happens during those exams, just to give you an idea of how those exams um, happen. Um, yeah, all right. So the first one is the MCCQE. Um, and it's called part one because there's a part two to it. Um, it's not required to apply to CARMS and I'll tell you what CARMS is uh, later. So MCCQE part one is the first exam required. Um, it's called the Medical Council of Canada Qualifying Examination and it's part one. It is scored, so they will actually score you out of, out of a number. It's not a pass or fail. Um, unlike the American systems, which just require pass or fail. It is a written exam, so there are two parts in it. The first part is all multiple choice, about four hours in the morning on the day of the exam. There is two, 10 multiple choice questions. That's the first part of the exam. And the second part is a clinical decision-making part. Um, in this case, it's more hands-on. They score you on how you would uh, counsel a patient. So there are, they will offer you 38 cases. Um, it's 3.5 um, hours in this exam. And there's, um, for each case that you look at, there's uh, multiple questions that they can ask you. Um, it's similar to your real life situation. So if you're in a clinic, patients would come on, um, they will tell you their problems. You will give them the diagnosis prescription. Same thing here. They will just test if you have the knowledge to do this. And it is similar to the US MLE uh, step three exam. So the topics that they cover in this exam are wide. It's different aspects of medicine, um, such as pediatrics or whatever. Um, but because in Canada, that's the difference here. Um, Canada is a country that focuses on the, the relation between the patient and the doctor. So they really focus on ethics. Um, and then the scoring part, if 
if you guys are interested, it's out of uh, 400 points and the passing score is 226. So that's the MCCQE. Um, the second one is the NAC, it's a National Assessment Collaboration Exam. It's also scored, there's no pass or fail. Um, you actually get um, a number. Uh, scores between uh, 200 to 500 and passing is 390. So here, this exam is more hands-on. It's like the part two of uh, MCCQE, um, but here you've got 12 stations that you go uh, through one by one. Um, in each station, there is a patient and an examiner. So the examiner is in the room um, looking and scoring you according to your performance on the patient. So um, you would go into this room, the first one, let's say, and this examiner will tell you the task that you need to do. And then this examiner will watch you do this task for about 11 minutes. Um, eight minutes is basically the specific time um, required for you to complete the task. And then the three minutes remaining is for you, for them to ask you uh, post-encounter questions. Um, and this is the NAC. It's about 12 stations and different tasks at different stations and it's hands-on. Okay, that's the second exam. Now going on to the third requirement, which is the IELTS. The IELTS exam is required by most um, universities around the world if you're an IMG. Um, here in Canada, the passing marks for each section is about seven. So you need to get a seven in the reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Um, and you need to take it two years uh, from, the from the date uh, taken uh, before you apply. So it's, it's quite tough to get sevens on IELTS, but it's doable. But the beautiful thing about Canada is that it's, it's not like, okay, if you don't have the IELTS, you're done. No, there's a chance that you can exempt from doing the IELTS. And that's by having your primary language of medical education in English, which is our case in this university. And I advise all of you, if you want to pursue a career in Canada, to do your patient care in English as well. So that would help you exempt from IELTS. And if you show them those proofs of, okay, I studied in English and I practiced my patient care in English, they'll be like, okay, you don't need the IELTS. So that's a route to get exempt from IELTS. All right, next. So the third one is, um, that's actually that's actually the, 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 the tough part about the Canadian route. It's like, there's a lot of requirements along the, the way. So first is the two exams, the IELTS, and then going to be, um, going to, to, to uh, a province that you're interested in, you need to actually discuss or um, look for the requirements of that province. So in Canada, there's a lot of provinces. So I've included here one of them, uh, British Columbia, the one I'm interested in. Um, so I've, I will, I'll be doing the MCCQE, the, the uh, NAC, and then I'll do my IELTS or get exempt from it. And if I want to apply to British Columbia, I would need to do the CAP exam which is UBC Clinical Assessment Program. Um, British Columbia together with Quebec and Alberta are the other two provinces that need additional requirements. And for the other provinces, you'd need to dive into what they need on the CARMS website. And I'll tell you um, what CARMS is in a bit. So that's just an additional requirement for BC. And the fourth requirement is the most important um, not one of the most important is reference letters, research and extracurriculars. So reference letters, let's discuss that first. To get reference letters, you need those letters from Canadian physicians. And how are we supposed to get those um, reference letters if we don't know any Canadian physician? And that's when the Canadian experience comes in. So if you have some space in the summer, which most of us do, um, I advise you if you want to pursue a career in Canada to go and do an observership or an elective in Canada um, and specifically in the place or the city that you want to apply in and in the hospital that you want to work in. Why is because as soon as you work there, you would get to know the, the doctors, the, the nurses, the people, uh, the life, the city. So you'll be more experienced compared to all others that are applying to that place. So when you ask for reference letters from those Canadian physicians within that hospital, they'll be able to provide. And these reference letters are, are, are important for the CARMS application that you have later. Okay, and that's the reference letter part. So you need three of them from Canadian physicians. It's, it's not accepted. Well, it is accepted, but it's better from the Canadian physicians. 
Um, okay, and then the last thing is extracellulars. And that's where you need to make yourself appear like a diamond, make yourself, uh, make yourself shine. So what you do is you got a lot of things to work on apart from your studies, your exams, your IELTS, your reference, your reference letters, um, observerships. You need to do stuff like research, volunteering, leadership roles, um, trying to make a difference in the community. Um, I, in this part, I would take the chance to, you know, advise all of you to not, okay, focus on your studies and make them shine. Like try to get fours and fives here in this university. Um, also attaining good, good scores in the, in the tests that I talked about earlier, but making sure that you're a well-rounded student is also important. Um, doing stuff like, you know, initiating an organization that changes something in your community, um, making a business, I don't know, working on roles like here, our coordinator, Victoria, it's like working on this project for doing, for helping people know how they would take routes to different countries. You know, these are important things that would help push you to be a better applicant, okay? So make sure you do this. All right, next. You, apart from everything else, so we've gone through the tests, the outs, um, what else? We got uh, additional requirements for provinces, reference letters, research, and extracurriculars. And then the final thing is actually you'd have to apply or do examinations to get your license after you've done your residency. So upon completion of residency training, family physicians must pass the College of Family Physicians of Canada certification examination. Okay, those are family physicians and specialists. They have to pass the Royal College of uh, Physicians and Surgeons of Canada certification examination specific to their uh, specialty. So I've I've been to so many clinics in Canada, and I've seen like a lot of um, physicians actually have those uh, certificates on their walls, and I've never known what those are. Apparently, all of them should go those, through this um, exam uh, exam. Uh, and they should get those stamps from, from those colleges um, of BC specifically talking here. So that's the fifth requirement. That's just the steps you have to go through. All right. Um, so what are the most important aspects of all of those requirements? Um, I've always been tricked by so many people saying, oh, uh, GPAs and marks are not important. Uh, Extracellulars are, are as important as those. No, I, I, I disagree after I've had this experience to fail to get into medical schools in Canada. The first thing they look at is your effing GPA or marks. So if you're doing those exams, make sure that your scores are high. Same with your current studies. You're in first year, I hope. I don't know if they're all in first year. If you are in first year or second year or third year, make sure you work hard because the first thing those committees look at is your scores. And then after they see those scores, they like, okay, check mark. Now we look at the second thing and the third thing comes with, uh, you know, um, those exams that uh, those um, research experiences that you have, your reference letters, your extracurriculars, those are secondary. So make sure those are good, the exams and the studies that you're going through right now. All right, um, what else do you think there's just? Yes, so here I've included a point. Um, let's say you have, related to extracurriculars is you apply to an observership um, in Canada, in a hospital that you want. How would I be able to do this? Um, doing this in Canada is very hard. And there isn't an organization that would help you to apply to this easily because as an IMG, in Canada, you're basically treated like somebody who is, I don't wanna say it like in a, in a, in a bad, in a negative way, but, CMGs are treated better than us there. So if you're an IMG and you tell them, okay, I wanna practice um, uh, this um, observership in your hospital, um, you know, speaking professionally, they wouldn't care much. So what I would advise you to do if you're an observership and you want to do something this summer in Canada is go to a hospital that you're interested in, get all the emails of all the physicians in those hospitals and start emailing them now. If you send about 500, you, you may get two or three replies. And, that, and those are your chances. So that's what some of my friends um, are doing right now. And it's very hard to get a position to do an observership in Canada. Um, and the only way to go about it is unprofessionally, just actually make a template, 
and shoot all of those uh, physicians that you um, can acquire an email. And then if you get a reply, then that's good. All right. We're going to watch a, just a short video about the match and what it actually means. Um, just give me a second. Completing medical school is a major milestone on the journey to your medical career. The next one is completing your residency training. To do that, you need to take part in the match, facilitated by the Canadian Resident Matching Service, an independent nonprofit created by medical students and faculties to ensure fairness and objectivity in the match process. Make sure you meet the eligibility criteria set by the provinces you want to train in. Then enter your background information into CARMS online. Select the programs that interest you and submit your application documents before the deadline. Programs will reach out directly to applicants they want to interview. After your interviews, it's decision time. Submit your rank order list. A list of the programs you want to train at in order of preference. Well, programs do the same with the applicants they want to train. The rank list is confidential, so neither applicants nor programs know who ranks them. Rank order lists, along with the program's available positions, are entered into our match algorithm, which is designed to provide the best possible match outcome based on the applicant's choice. On match day, you see your match results through CARMS Online. As a match applicant, you're ready to take the next step on your path to practicing medicine in Canada. Learn how CARMS can help you. All right. That was... Hope that was useful. Okay. Okay, so just what is CARMS? Um, think about CARMS as a bridge between you and those medical schools in Canada. And the application that you submit is through the CARMS online system. Um, what is it? It's a nonprofit organization that was um, that um, was founded by medical students and physicians. Um, and they have succeeded in matching 75,000 of us, the IMGs, um, into Canadian uh, schools. Okay, so what is a match? So a match is basically you applying to a job, but it's a bit different. So you have an application submission, they review your application, then you get interviewed. But the difference here is this rank order list that is run through a math-based algorithm, okay, and gives you a result directly. So this rank order list is the following. So as a student applying to those universities, you would go ahead and choose the first choice, let's say uh, University of Ottawa here, pediatrics and Ottawa, right? So you would give your choices of interest and where and what university, and this is your ROL. Now you're the first party. Now the party on the other side, the programs that you're applying to also submit an ROL into the CARM system. And then this, this algorithm just runs to match those programs with those students. And I'll show you a video about this in a bit so that you can understand because it's really important for you to know um, how those things run so that you're not just in, in uh, like ignorant about it, okay? So another video, just so quick, that's the match algorithm I'm gonna show you. It's a bit long, but it's important works. CARMS uses a globally recognized algorithm to match medical students and residents to postgraduate training positions in Canada. The algorithm's job is to create the best possible combination of matches given the choices of applicants and programs. To do this, it needs three things. One, the number of available positions for each program in the match. Two, a list of preferred applicants from each program. And Three, a list of preferred programs from each applicant. These lists are called rank order lists. The algorithm optimizes applicant and program outcomes based on their respective rank order lists. It starts by attempting to match the applicant into their highest ranked program and moves down the list until a match is found. There are no hacks or cheat codes. All participants need to do is rank what they want in order of their true preferences. And it's safe to do so because rank order lists are confidential. 
Our biggest match includes more than 5,000 applicants and 650 plus programs. But let's simplify by looking at a scenario with four applicants applying to three programs. Applicant Singh ranked plastic surgery at general first. The program also ranked Singh first, so it's an immediate match, and the program has filled its one position. Applicant Garcia's first ranked program is Dermatology at City. She tentatively matches there. Applicant Gagnon ranked three programs. The algorithm starts with Gagnon's first choice, plastic surgery at general, but it's already been filled by a higher ranked applicant, Singh. So it moves to the second rank, Family Medicine at City, where Gagnon has been ranked second by the program. Since there are two positions and Gagnon is one of the two highest ranked available applicants, it's a match. Applicant Lee's first rank is Dermatology at City, where there is one position. Lee is ranked second by the program, but their top ranked applicant, Singh, already matched to a preferred program, making way for Lee to match here. As the program is now full, the algorithm removes Garcia's tentative match, revisits her rank order list, and moves on to her next rank, Family Medicine at City, resulting in a match to the last available position there. In this example, all applicants have been matched to a program. However, it is possible for an applicant to go unmatched. There are three reasons this could happen. One, they weren't ranked by a program they ranked. Two, they didn't rank a program who ranked them. Three, the program was filled by higher ranked applicants. To learn more about the algorithm and best practices that can help optimize your match experience, visit carms.ca forward slash algorithm. All right, that's the algorithm. Took me some time to understand, but that's how they run it, okay? All right, so this is just quick you need to be very clear about the people who the parties who put the policy and the process the people who put the par, uh, policies are the 17 canadian faculties of medicine the province the provincial um, ministry of health the association of faculties of medicine of canada so these are the people the parties that put the uh, positions available the rules the requirements and then they pass it on to the bridge which is carms and then you apply to carms and that's when matches happen. So that's how the process all goes about. Okay, so why is it hard to match in Canada? So the number of seats for IMGs in Canada is very low compared to the US. Um, imagine there's like 90% of the seats that, that, that are offered only for the Canadian people. And then you've got only 10% um, given to the IMG, IMGs. And those IMGs are not the general public, but they're IMGs who have Canadian citizens citizenship or a PR. And if you're not among those people, you'd need to consider applying for a PR. So that's why it's it's really, really competitive. Okay, so this is just telling us how the competitiveness happens. So in different provinces, they either have parallel pathways or competitive. So if let's say in, Brit in, uh, in Nova Scotia, it says par uh, parallel. Parallel means that IMGs and CMGs do not compete for seats. And when it says competitive, it means that IMGs and CMGs compare, uh, compete for the same seats. So that, that's just something that you're, you should be aware of when you get into the CARMS uh, system. Okay, so just a story of an IMG that is just like us studying outside of Canada and is interested to go back and study in Canada. So this person is a friend of mine. Um, he studied in the medical school of Aleppo, okay, in Syria. He was interested in specializing um, in, uh, in three fields, neurology, internal medicine, and family medicine. Um, he got a number of interviews, actually, passing all of those requirements I've, I've um, said before. Um, and the way they, they interviewed him was, was really interesting. Um, the interview was only focused on getting to know him, plus why he is interested to be in the city and if he knows things about the city. Um, so this comes back to us saying, okay, so I should be practicing my observerships in the summer in the place that I want to apply into, because that really helps me in my interview later on. Because they'll be asking you questions about the city and why you want to move here and what connections do you have to the city and what do you know about it? Because 
once you get in, you, you sign a return of service contract that you're going to be staying in this place for about like four years, just like my friend. So he got into internal medicine and then he signed a contract for about four years and he has to serve in this place for four years. So he was fortunate to get a place in a place that he likes because his family lives there. He did all his observerships in the summer in that place. He, his connections, his life, his memories, um, he created within a good amount of time um, things that he can relate to to this place. So he got into it and, and you know, now he is a senior medical resident in charge of junior medical, uh, medical residents in the hospital of Ottawa. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go into the earnings of, of different, um, different specs of, of medicine. So in emergency, the, the, the yearly rate is like uh, 281,000 per year. And, and in Canada, the ophthalmologists, well, Victoria is interested in this. They, they get they get paid about 76, 76, 769,000 per year and that's like two millions lots about you know and it's just a lot um, medical people earn a lot in Canada and their life is is really good I mean if you get a chance to get into the medical health system in um, Canada good on you um, there are some benefits um, it's it's crazy how you can acquire uh, career development in Canada. It's one of the huge, most like, I can't even describe it. It's, it's, it's very, very, very beautiful how they do it over there. The Canadian um, health system is one of the best in the world. And um, there's a couple of organizations that can help you as a physician to expand um, your, your reach in your, your field. And um, you, I, I don't think, I don't, I'm just a fan of it. Um, some insurance benefits is like the dental, the dental and healthcare plans um, those things I've tried personally. I've worked in Canada after I graduated um, from Bachelor's of Science uh, for about a year at Vancouver Coastal Health. I worked with, with physicians teaching them how to do uh, digital reports uh, for their patients. And the amount of benefits that I got as a person just giving tutorials to physicians was a lot. And if you were a physician yourself, I mean, the benefits will even be way higher. Um, healthcare system in Canada is great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> All right. I, I, I can't stress it, but it's amazing. Some questions. I'm, I'm honest, honestly done. I, I don't know if I bored you guys, but it would be honestly nice to hear. Yeah, in the chat. Yep. So the first one is at uh, what point of medical school during or after do Canadian students pass those exams? And was at the exams at the very beginning, I guess, like the MC, uh, CQ. Oh, so so those exams, you probably want to do them and study for them in your last year, because once you have them, um, the next the year after that, you'd want to apply into um, getting a match. So all of the exams that you mentioned before are. Uh, conducted after people fi finish their med school. Yes, yes, because you need that you need to apply um, after for for a, for a specialty, and you can't go apply to a match unless you're done with your med school. Uh, there is another question: What what is more important? Uh, I don't understand the question, to be honest. GPU. I don't know. You can take a look in the chat box. Uh, Vitali, maybe Vitali can retype it for us. Hmm. Okay, there's another question. Um, how does the road to working in Canada look like if you finish residency in a different country, let's say England or USA? Oh man, I think it's it's you need to do those exams. Like, like I understand. I don't think they will they will qualify. Like Canada treats every other med school outside its its borders like like absolute nothing so they would need you to go and do um those exams again and i think you'd need to do residency uh, they don't they don't validate something okay. outside their circle yeah so you will need to review the redo the residency even though you finished it outside of canada yep yep i think that's the case i don't think you can have a way around it <laughs> okay what should I do if I want to pass the final exam in Poland and do the fellowship in Canada? Is it possible? 
or a better way is to do fellowship in Poland and apply for, to residency in Canada. Can I apply to residency in Canada with a diploma from Poland or should I pass additional exams in Canada? So, so you like, like those, like I repeat again, the Canadian system is very strict. And even if you finished your residency outside, like they, they do not validate anything outside their, 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 their country. Like you'd have to do their, their residency and then apply for the exams after that so that you can get that license that you're able to work in Canada. Because it's like, it's like, I don't know how they do it, but they don't validate anything outside. I mean, imagine how hard it will be for us IMGs, right? Canadian people who are studying within Canada need a lot of requirements to get into their medical schools. And imagine you're studying outside and then trying to get in, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. I don't think that's possible. Okay, someone asked, uh, what are the competition ratios for different speciali specializations in Canada? Oh, I have no idea, but I can search up this for you and I can reply to you, Michael. Um, but it's quite, it's quite competitive, um, but no idea, no idea. For it can get published on the Facebook event, maybe, so, yes, yeah. so will, people will. have access to that. Okay, GPA from... Wrocław Medical University versus scores um, from uh, scores of the Canadian exams. Uh -huh. That was yeah. the, so but, the, but asking, maybe. Um, so the GPA from um, the R University is important, just in case, because I know sometimes, like for me, as a, as a student that I've gone through a bachelor's in science, I was like, okay, I will just apply to MCAT and forget about my GPA. And they would actually look at my MCAT and say, okay, it's a good, but your GPA is bad, why? So in all cases, you need to be perfect. Like make sure your GPA is good. That's the first step right now, because now we're, we're in first year Magdalena. And then scores of the Canadian exams, that's, the, that's another priority. I think your GPA and your scores of Canadian exam are this, on the same level. I think you have to work hard on both. Uh, yes, you can take those exams, but I'm not sure how many times, I'm not sure. That's actually a good question. Is there okay. any way to acquire PR without spending thousands of dollars? Nope. <laughs> That's actually, man, I, I, I want to swear, but yeah, like my dad, my dad paid about 120,000 bucks just to let them say, okay, come do your business. Um, I, and then skilled, skilled workers have to pay about 12,000 to 24,000. Yeah, there's, it's hard, man. It's hard. I know. Demanding. <laughs> Demanding. <laughs> I'm sorry. It feels bad, but that's how it is. <laughs> Are there any more questions, maybe? Off topic, but is Canada offering any work internships for medical students from the, the question will be a little bit off topic, but is Canada offering any work slash internships uh, for medical students from okay. EU? Okay, so nobody is going to tell you yes, okay? But I'm telling you yes. So how you do it is don't, don't go about it the professional route. So maybe go, let's say, for a visit okay, to Canada for about two months or something. You get a visa to Canada and you go. If you have connections in Canada, which is me, I can help you out. Um, you can actually e start, like I mentioned it, start emailing those doctors within a hospital that you're interested in, okay? And then you, you pile up a lot of emails until you get a reply. Once you get a reply, that's when you, you have a chance to work there. But that's the only route. I mean, if you want to be somebody from the EU. Um, it's hard, to, like for me, for me, I'm a Canadian resident and it's hard for me to get a chance to practice in, in, um, in, in a hospital unless I have connections. I just wanted to mention because I know people who did it this way, you can practice in Canada with a U.S. residency. I believe you still need to pass. Yes, you need you need to pass those exams. You need to. Yes, you can. U.S. and Canada are very close to each other, and they love each other because they're quite similar with their health systems. Um, so if you go into the U.S. and you want to move to Canada, it's easier than being in EU and moving to Canada. Yeah, but you still need to pass the exam. I just wanted to mention because I know a few people who did, did this way. You can practice in Canada with USA residency, but I believe you still need to pass certain exams. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. 
very brief. And and trust me, guys, like I've lived in Canada for six years. Generally, life there is amazing, especially, I mean, Vancouver. I lived there for six years, all of it. It's one of the best places to live in. Just saying, just if you're wondering about life there. And for young young people like us, yes, it's the best nightlife and stuff like that. But uh, it's cold, I guess, no? It's Vancouver is not cold. It's not like Wrocław right now? So Wrocław is negative 11. The, the least, the most um, uh, degree is like nine, negative nine. That's it in Vancouver. Hey. It's good. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's it. Lucky. Oh, wow. Yeah, in Toronto, it reaches like negative 40. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. In others, it, it's bad. Uh, someone directly to me sent, I think, by app by accident, where to apply at first. What do you mean? What does he mean? Oh, oh, in general? I think so. Okay, so uh, the process goes like this. You need to first get your NAC, MCCQE exams done, and that's close to fifth or sixth year, okay? Then you need to figure out the IELTS stuff. If you're good with IELTS, then, then that's good. In our case, we may not need IELTS because we practiced in English and we did, we did our education in English. Now, you then need to figure out the exams of the provinces, like British Columbia needs CAP. So you need to do the CAP. And after you've done all of that and passed them, then you apply to CARMS and build your ROL. And then you give them your documents, I have the PR, I have the exams, I have everything you need. Then they start getting you into that math algorithm and then they match you if you're successful. That's it. So I'll pass these exams being in Canada. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> About, About the internship I asked before, uh, is there any organization that helped get there? And I understood that I need to email doctors for permission, right? By the way, I don't have any connections there, so. Yeah, the, I, I do not have any knowledge about organizations that help you uh, get um, an internship there. How people do it in Canada, at least my friends, and it's a lot of them, they, they are well connected within the society, okay? And they just reach out to physicians they know. And if they're not connected, they will just email doctors through the hospital websites. And that's how people do it, you know, because doctors most of the time are busy and they're not, they're not into wasting time. You'd have to run after them. That's how we do it. If you have done specialization in EU, for example, Germany, can uh, move to, can you move to work in Canada without redoing the specialization training? Yes, but probably you need, you need some exams. Um, at the specialization level, I'm not sure, but you need exams to Canada um, to get your well, license. Specialization, you will need to redo it anyways, or not. I think, that, I, think that's, I think that's the case because my mother, she's a nurse, and she did her, her specialty in nursing outside Canada in the UAE. And she's now, until now, trying to get her specialization by doing, by doing exams there. She can't. I, yeah. So, you have to pass exams, yeah. So either you go from the very beginning or you don't go. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I have just joined the meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but what I, what I know, when you're at the specialization level, you just need exams and IELTS. That's what I think. But when, when you're like us, you have to go through the things I mentioned. Because my mother is, is at that stage. Yeah. Just have to. So are there any more questions? Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, she wants us to send it to her email. If you want, you can share the slides anywhere. I don't know. If you're comfortable, we can share them on Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah I don't mind. Anybody is welcome. We might, we might drop the presentation on Facebook like within one day, I could say. Um, just, just an advice, guys, like it's important to keep your grades up to date, like four or five max on this university, then your grades in the tests, plus your extra extracurriculars, like go out and do something, change something in the community. Canada loves extracurriculars and 
everywhere on their websites. They want you to be an individual that causes change in the community. They really care about this point, apart from your exam, uh, grades, of course. So yeah. Is the exam only done in Canada or there are other places or country specific? No, it's done in Canada. These exams are done in Canada. You'd have to go travel to Canada and do them. And my friend, she just texted me, uh, what kind of things uh, except volunteering you can do outside of the university so it could, you know, boost your application later on? Man, like, I've, look, I've done, I've done four years worth of work. I can tell you, be creative. They love, they love you to be well-rounded. For example, I have done, I, I don't know, I was a president of a culture club. I, I, I did, I mentored teenagers for about four years. I worked with kids uh, ages of six to uh, nine. I worked with, with seniors. I went to clean beaches. I went um, on, on a trip to, uh, rescuing uh, Syrian refugees off the beach. I went to Ecuador, um, it, shadow doctors in surgeries of, of nose, heart. Um, I went, fuck, what did I do? Like I did so many things. Um, uh, so like, just, just go out and do stuff, you know, like be creative because the more you impress them, the more you're like, wow, this guy is like, no, but also like, uh, maybe, I don't know, student associations are yeah. also, yeah, yeah, and that kind of, I don't know, scientific articles. I know that a lot of people in our universities are actually involved in the scientific work. So maybe that also might be a yes. boost. Yes. And, and like, like like i don't know publish publish a paper um write a book something that you know changes the changing something and one thing do you need to i don't know write something like personal statement because like I, mm -hmm. like most probably in the us you know to you need to write a personal statement out yourself and your personal history and you know yes uh part of the carms application which is the bridge that i talked about needs you to write a personal statement and part of this person's statement support are the three references from the Canadian professionals. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Nice. There are two more questions. Is there any hospital that you recommend, for example, for a summer internship? Are there a are they care about the extra curriculars also? Yeah. So the, about the extra activities you already talked. Do you have any hospital recommendations? Yes, um, I don't know if you're interested in coming to Vancouver, which is one of the best cities, I think. Um, Richmond Hospital, Vancouver Hospital, uh, Surrey, Surrey Memorial, like all of those, I can probably, I don't know if you can reach out to me, I don't know how, but I can give you all the hospitals I can recommend. It, they're really good. If you do is it possible to get accepted with grades like three and four? Uh, okay, so so that's, that's, that's my case in Canada. So I, I got a GPA of 75, which is, which is, which is not good at all. Um, I was focused on extracurriculars. There are people who got 89, 80, uh, 89 and 90 averages. So when they look at you, they'd be like, okay, why would I take him and not take the 90 guy, right? So I would advise you to step up your game if you're at three or four. Try to be four and five all, with, all the time. No chance, no excuses. Because they will really point it out, be like, why? They will really ask you. Um, so if you uh, if you do the specialization in Poland, then you have to repeat it in the Canada. Uh, most probably. Most probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they don't. Um, in some cases, I don't know. In some cases, like sometimes, like my mom, she did a presentation, uh, a specialization in nursing, and they told her you need those exams in IELTS, right? Um, but but I'm not not sure about Poland. I'm not sure about Poland, but probably yes because it's an EU country. Thank you for the great presentation, Haitab. You mentioned contacting you. Should we should we need any help organizing an internship? Could you maybe share your email? Yeah, <laughs> sure, Boris. I'll, I'll give you my email and I'll help you with the internship. I have some connections there if you want to come. Is I think me? your email will be spammed after the statement. <laughs> I can see. Okay. Oh, Moving man. on to the next question. Is it more difficult to move to the US or yeah. Canada, where would you recommend to move? I would recommend you to go to the US 
why is because in the US, you don't need a green card. Number one, number one, wait, wait, calm down. So life, life and, and practicing um, um, medicine, Canada, I love it. Okay, it's amazing. But difficulty wise, US is easier. Why? Because you don't need a green card to apply to their medical schools. And if you get accepted into the US, then it's easy for you to go to Canada, right? So that's the difference. In Canada, you need a PR. In the US, you don't, you, you don't need a green card. Yeah. Is it possible to have summer clinical practice in Canada studying in Poland, not by IMSA? Yes, yes, it's possible. If you're gonna organize it, then everything's possible, you know? <laughs> uh, and there's another question from my friend and she's asking, for example, if you are going for the summer internships like outside of Poland, for example, in Germany, it doesn't count. Is, hmm. is the board, examination board, like looking at it? Yes, in Canada. I've, mentioned, I've mentioned that um, uh, to one thing they look at is, is your IELTS. So, so if you have patient care with people who don't speak English or environment that doesn't speak English, they'll be like, okay, where's your proof that you practice patient care in English? And they will actually make you do the IELTS. Yeah, but like still, that doesn't it show that you can actually do something more if you can speak more than like English and Polish, for example, because like in this case, if you go like, for example, I don't know, to Germany, you need yeah. to speak German as well. And I think it might be a boost as well that you, I don't know, are open minded person. I, I believe that so. But but when it comes to the IELTS part, they will be like, yeah, yeah. IELTS is IELTS. I mean, if you go to different countries, they'll be like, OK, you visited different countries. Well. <laughs> and congrats it was like to summarize it like what are your pro tips for our our friends from our university man fucking study hard don't waste time get get your ass doing some some cool shit um like go out help people in in very professional ways and and let your experience during medical school portray personal growth first and foremost and then like on a personal level, I'm saying, and then on, on, on a professional level, because that's what they really care about. You need to be as empathetic as possible because in the future, if you wanna to go to Canada, they look at how emotionally intelligent you are and how, care, uh, how, how much care you provide to the patients. I mean, in the exam itself, they'll be like, okay, uh, scoring you on how you treated the patient. Most of it, the NAC, it's just scoring you. And so, soft skills are very important in this case. Yes, man. Yes. Yes. That's my advice. Do you have any advice? I, oh, what? If you work in science and publish articles, is it beneficial for applying for fellowship? Yes. Yes. It's very good. And anything is good. Anything is good. Like anything that shows that you can actually do yes. things is good i would say you have to stand out because there are so many motherfuckers out there competing against you so do you recommend any university in canada oh yes okay medical school university of british columbia the one i studied in it's the third ranked university uh in canada or you can go to toronto but it's really hard to get in uh westerloo ontario um mcmaster is good queens Carlton, there's a lot of research and unpublished papers. Connections. How can we get involved in research and public publish papers? You need connections, first and foremost. Um, the issue is that depending on which university you are in, because like if you're in Wrocław Medical University, I might help you at some point, because I'm trying like to engage our ED friends to do stuff like, I don't know, for example, this whole cycle is basically the world to do anything. Yeah. But like the issue is to get into publishing anything. Most probably you need to get into student association. I don't know, ophthalmology, cardiology, anything. Uh, I graduated from, wow. I mean, I, I know it only from the perspective of the students uh, right now. So. But like, I would say that, ah, uh, I don't know, postgraduate, po like publications, ah, uh, it's not my field right now. I, I don't know. <laughs> connections, I think connections, man, like with connections, you can get anything you want. 
Are you wearing any pants? Man, like, <laughs> look. <laughs> this, this, this meeting is recorded. Excuse me. Let's yes, keep it professional, baby. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Can you make a summary about what you said? I mean, the presentation yeah. is a summary, isn't it? It's, it's a quick summary. I mean, it's all summarized in the first part of the presentation. Oh, well. No, so basically working 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 and working working and working man working and working working and working okay. enjoy enjoy your studies guys enjoy your studies okay do you know something, something about quebec oh quebec is, um, quebec is is a different world it's it's a different world within canada it has its own rules quebec is a french based uh province within within bc it has its own exams and its own men because of the French language, everything is different in Quebec. But generally, the same things I mentioned is required there with additional requirements um, for the province. Plus the French language. I don't know if else is required for Quebec, but yeah. So basically, depending on the province, you need to go through the entry requirement. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. they're very nice personal statement and everything. You have to be very good with everything. But listen, listen, look, like I know, I know it sounds like, oh, you have to be perfect. No, you have to just be you. And to be you is hard. So to figure out you go out and, and do some cool stuff. And then you'll reach to the point where you're satisfied with yourself and you will know that you, they, they'll accept you. You will know it. It's not scary. Okay, that's like, it. I mean, I think we as we as young people, we are having a lot of opportunities. Exactly. The, the university is also there to boost our work, I would say. Exactly, exactly. Um, somebody said, oh, uh, Alicia wants to add me on social media for sure. For sure. No problem. Share your Instagram. Did I do it now? What the heck? idea if you feel like it like you might okay whatever everybody let's go all right guys this is my instagram shoot me a message if you need if you have any questions where you typed it though oh i typed it only to alicia wait <laughs> okay that's fun that's right. fun if you have any questions shoot me a message Okay, so are there any more questions? I think we're we're done. So I'm gonna 